What's up, Broskies? Damocles here, and today I am bringing you my unstoppable, annoying Crustle build. I think this is one of the best Crustle builds in the game currently, uh, just because of how obnoxious it is in solo queue specifically. You guys know how I feel about solo queue and playing defenders, uh, but you guys were asking for more defender guides, so I'm trying to put it out there for you. As always, if you like this content and you want to see more of it, make sure you hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and the like button down below, and follow me on all of socials like TikTok for quick guides or Twitter and Twitch for more Pokemon Unite news and builds. Um, this game in particular is a pretty weird game. I'm going in, I don't have any, but I'm not playing with anybody. Um, and the reason why I always recommend you guys not to play defenders and supports in solo queue is because you are really beholden to your teammates as a defender or as a support uh, in terms of damage output and help in the lane. And this game is no exception. You can see in the early game here, we really do not do too much laning wise, but that's why I like this build. Uh, it's because you're able to really affect the map more with your macro play, meaning your rotation ability um, than just your individual laning. Um, so what we're going to be running is the classic Shell Smash and uh, Stealth Rocks build. Um, Shell Smash for the macro movement and Stealth Rocks for the objective control and zone control and damage. Um, and But instead of normally what you see in you know, a lot of high competitive play uh, when you see Crustles is uh, Fluffy Tail because of the interaction with Fluffy Tail and Shell Smash and Stealth Rocks. Uh, but what I found... Um, you know, when I'm playing solo queue, especially as a defender, I really want to be able to have those clutch scoring um, capabilities. And uh, I found that Fluffy Tail was just not seeing as much use when I was running it alone as if I was with a team of people. I hope that makes sense. Uh, and so that's why I swapped over to Goal Getter and I actually really I enjoyed it a lot more. So um, for the actual items in this build, I'm going to be running Scope Lens, going to be running buddy bear and i'm going to be running score shield uh the reason being is this build is trying to take advantage of the stacking of score shield buddy bear and crustle's unite move uh, because this basically makes it so crustle has like a 3000 hp shield that nobody can stop um, and it just allows you to score for free basically um, and then combined with goal getter you're going to be able to go and literally tank like four people hitting you at once and score uh real easily even in real Really clutch moments in the game where you know it's literally just you alive maybe and you need to get this last score before the game ends um, this build really opens that up for you so that's why I'm enjoying goal getter on this uh, but if you again if you don't like that style um, you could definitely go and run uh, fluffy tail because uh, well let me just explain so basically um, Crustle's uh, stealth rocks can crit for whatever reason and so that's why you see a lot of people running scope lens on crustle because it just kind of amplifies that ability to crit and stealth rocks does a large amount of damage especially to uh, objectives it's just really good zone control and so basically what you can do is go and just drop stealth rocks on an objective like a dreadnought for example uh, fluffy tail it and you can just kind of like walk away and you can get a lot of really clutch steals. It also gives Crustle a massive amount of objective control because if you, even if you just have one other teammate helping you and you drop a Stealth Rocks onto an objective, it's going to melt that objective. And that gets multiplied 10 times with Shell Smash in combination with Stealth Rocks and Fluffy Tail. Um, but like I said, this build, I'm going Goal Getter because... Uh, I just found that there was a lot of situations where I would be in a position to take Dreadnought with the Stealth Rocks um, Fluffy Tail combo or another objective, and I would go in, I would try and steal it, and maybe I do get the steal, um, but the amount of times that actually happens throughout the course of a match where I'm in a position to do that and I'm not getting zoned out by the enemy team while my team ignores me, uh, was hap it was happening an exceedingly large amount. So I called an audible. I switched over to goal getter just so I was sure that I could go and get these scores that I didn't need to rely on my teammates for. You know what I mean? I could just go and I could use my own macro play to rotate across the map and uh, and stop people from, you know, being able to defend their bases and stuff like that. And that's why uh, I consider this to be, you know, the unstoppable Crustle build in that we're trying to just be super obnoxious and 
uh, you know, do what I'm about to do here, right? Like, I know that the enemy team's right there. The Gardevoir's staring right at me. I pop this. Look at the amount of shielding I have. There's no chance that she's going to be able to stop me or he's going to be able to stop me from, uh, from scoring here. And we just get that goal. We melt them both down. Uh, and then I basically end up with a, a bunch more points as well. And then we even almost score again, uh, but we have to walk away because of the Cinderace. Uh, and it's just me up here. I don't want to go and... Uh, lose all these points or you know have some nasty death timer so I just walk away uh, but this is kind of how you want to play this particular build at least in the way that I'm playing it um, and that is trying to amass a large amount of points um, against the enemy team before Zapdos and everything else spawn so that they have to go and respond to you even if your team is not in particular you know doing anything crazy across the map um, and when I talk about macro play right what I mean is uh, like in MOBAs, you have micro play, you have macro play. Micro is the individual tiny movements that you make, you know, say during a laning phase, or maybe it could be, you know, dodging a particular ability, uh, you know, in a one-on-one -on -one fight, stuff like that. Like your own individual skillful movements. Macro play is the big stage, is your your map movements, your plays across the map, um, and that's what this build excels in: is being able to roam with shell smash, which gives you massively increased movement speed. Gives you great flanking potential. Um, look at how, how many times I auto this Cinderace and just miss. This is so annoying to me. I was like, why is this happening? But we ended up getting him in the end. Um, but um, this build excels in that kind of area denial, uh, coming from behind, trying to go and score these points, um, and making it so your team isn't as far behind as they really should be in a particular match. Uh, right, and then obviously, even though we're not running Fluffy Tail, Stealth Rock still does a large amount of damage to objectives, and it lingers for a large period of time after you drop it. So uh, you can still have that objective stealing potential and that uh, that zone control that you want with your normal Crustle builds. But you're also able to do annoying stuff like this, like just score in their face while they're trying to hyper voice you down. Um, and that's why I think this build is a lot of fun, and I think you guys might want to just give it a shot. Um, it's not too different from like you know the crustle builds that you see every day uh because all crustles basically since the beginning of time have run the same thing uh but i just think that uh you know focusing on your macro play focusing on your rotations makes a world of difference when you're playing this character because uh in terms of movement speed there's nobody else that can really keep up with you uh the only other thing that i can think of that comes close is like a pedal dance giga drain venusaur um but even then you can drop stealth rocks behind you and uh you know if people stand in it with those crits it will chunk people out like make no mistake it will chunk people people do people underestimate it massively and that's because of you know remember Shell Smash, you're getting that movement speed increase, but you're also getting a damage increase, and uh, you're cutting some of your defenses uh, by a massive margin, so when people don't expect that extra damage output from the, uh, from the Stealth Rocks. But it's also something for you to keep in mind um, when you're using Shell Smash to get away or to sneak up to an objective, you're also reducing the you're, you're you're reducing your defenses, meaning that you're making yourself more vulnerable for those uh, movement speed boosts and that and for those damage boosts. So you need to keep that in mind. You could actually be lessening your lifespan if you go and you pop Shell Smash in a bad situation. Um, but I always like to keep I always like to you know keep farmed up, especially on Crustle. Make sure you have that unite move. I'm just here trying to really keep them off this objective because I know with this current build. I don't necessarily have to take Zapdos in order to score on these people. These people have to take Zapdos in order to score on me, right? I could go, and if I'm just defending, like, look at that Stealth Rocks. The way I placed it, she can't walk back through for a large amount of time. I go and I pop my Unite move on top of Zapdos because in a lot of cases, the size of Krustle's, um HP bar uh, actually can go and block some of Zapdos's HP bar in terms of your user interface, and it can make it a lot harder for people to uh, Zapdos steal it as well. So I popped it there just to be safe. Um, but what I really want to do was save it so that I could go and if we lose Zapdos, I can go and get some clutch scores later on in the game um, against five people, you know, 
Um, and so that's something to keep in mind as well. You, you know, you have that zone control. Go and drop your stealth rocks in the middle of a, uh, a pathway or a choke point so that the enemy team can't go and get to you um, or they can't escape you. And that's what this build is really great at. Uh, again, guys, I'm not too crazy about defenders in, you know, just playing solo, but uh, I do think that this build is particularly obnoxious if you were deciding to go that route. We end up with 235 points, seven kills, three assists, which is not that bad. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you want to run X scissors and run this, go for it. I just think stealth rocks, the utility of it is really nice, uh, especially with team fighting, uh, zone control, objective control, all that. Um, but uh, I hope you guys enjoy this build. I had a decent amount of fun time uh, doing it because I don't like it because obviously, in my opinion, playing tanks in solo queue is not that fun. Uh, but I hope um, this helps you guys out. Sorry, I'm coming down with a, a cold. Um, I want to do that Nintendo eShop gift card giveaway, so I think what I'm going to do uh, in the next couple of days, I'm just going to drop a uh, Gleam IO uh, giveaway thing in one of my next videos. Uh, people will be able to sign up there, and I'll just pick up, I'll have Gleam pick a winner from that and send you guys the Nintendo eShop uh, card. It is right here, um, and uh, then hopefully we can do some more giveaways. Uh, and uh, that's going to be it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure if you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, notification bell. And that's going to be it for me. Peace out, guys.